The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So, in the Bible, it identifies an ox and an ass. Who knows their owner, knows their master's crib. But God says, his people don't know. Meaning they don't know who they are. Which is relevant for yourselves as it was for us. We would have many of the same answers. African, then they say, well, what tribe? You know, it's always a guessing game, a guessing game for us. Well, I want to open up with the identifying God's chosen people. All right, we're going to open up with that. Many times we have uh, thoughts about our various nationalities. For example, I know you're looking at the flyers, however, what would you see, say your racial, racial origin is? I would say that my racial origin is African. Okay, African. Young lady, what would you say? African? And yourself? What would you say? Huh? Indian. Okay, young lady, what would you say? You don't know. Okay, what would you say? Ethiopian, Nigerian. And you? African? African and Caribbean. Now, y'all know that those of you that claim African descent, you know there are about 3,000 African tribes. So then it gets a little more complicated. So, okay, what tribe? I would say I'm from the tribe of the... You said you would Uba, say. Uba or Uba. So that means you don't know. I don't know, of course. Young, young lady, you don't know. Who else said African? You said African? You don't know. You said it. Now, you mentioned Ethiopian and Nigeria. Okay, um, we're going to come back to that. That's good. And you have no idea. Very good. I want to open up one more thing. I'm sorry. Isaiah 1, verse 3. And then I'm going to show you some illustrations. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, and verse 3. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So, in the Bible, it's identifies an ox and an ass. Who knows their owner, knows their master's crib. But God says his people don't know, meaning they don't know who they are, which is relevant for yourselves as it was for us. We would have many of the same answers, African, then they say, well, what tribe? Uh, I don't know. We would always, it was always a guessing game, a guessing game for us. So now, we've always been taught, I know coming up when I was into uh, Afrocentricity, it was always said that the Bible is the white man's book. Have you ever heard that? The Bible's written by the white man? So I always heard that, so after I, I ran from Christianity, I went into Afrocentric, Afrocentricity, and I hated the Bible. Didn't want to hear nothing about it. And then the brothers came and they started to show me various things and opened my eyes to look at it with new eyes. How many of y'all saw the movie Birth of a Nation? Y'all saw that? One sister. Brother, you didn't see it? What the, what's going on with our people? You sisters, make sure y'all see that movie. Very good movie. It's gonna, it shows you the origin of Christianity, right. how um, the white man used black Christian males to subdue the slaves mentally. Uh, and in the film, it shows you how Nat Turner started to see the Bible with new eyes and how it was not saying what, Christians what the white Christians taught the slaves it was saying. This is the standpoint we're coming from, and this is the standpoint of what the Bible is about. The Bible is nothing with what you think it's saying of universal love, uh, what else to say, what else do they say? Universal love for everybody. The Bible's everybody's book. Um, the laws are done away with, that's not biblical at all. Many of us, we, we quote the Bible, certain passages, and in the movie, Nat Turner mentions, he says, they, they taught me to quote and read only certain passages. He said, but in my alone time, I was able to read more on my own, and I saw things they didn't want me to see. So. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Let's go to the first slide, please. I have the scriptures on the screen for you so y'all can see for yourselves exactly what the Bible is saying. And I have Captain Isaac. Isaac, can you come over here for us? Sort of center. I have Captain Isaac uh, read it aloud. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes which I command thee this day, 
that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now we want to find out who is Moses talking to, because in church, there's always talking to everybody. Everybody didn't come out of Egypt with Moses. Get uh, chapter 27, verse 1. See what's talking. Chapter 27, verse 1. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I command you this day. So now we have identified Moses is talking to who? Israel. Understand that. He's talking to Israel. So now what we're about to identify is who is Israel? Is it the uh, Caucasians in Israel today? Or is it the, the blacks that went over here in slavery throughout the Caribbean, all places like that? Let's find out. Next slide, please. So we're going to identify the curses. Numbers verse 16, read that. Verse 16. Cursed. Shalt thou be in the city? So the one, one curse is that the Israelites would be cursed in whatever city they came into. So remember, the Israelites had just came out of Egypt, which is in Africa, northeast Africa. They just came out of Egypt from under Pharaoh, Ramses II. They're in the wilderness. Now Moses is telling the Israelites, if you break God's commandments, these are some of the curses that will come upon you and overtake you. One curse is that you shall be cursed in the city. Read on. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Next slide. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. So here in the city, like for example, New York City, you have the famous Wall Street. I'm sure you've all heard of Wall Street, where you had a huge slave market located where Wall Street reached the East River. It was established in 1711 as a place where enslaved blacks and Native American Indians could be hired or purchased. A lot of people don't realize Native American Indians were sold as slaves right along with blacks. Next slide, please. Still dealing with the city. Thousands of blacks, Latinos, Native American Indians were held in bondage and sold in the early colonial settlements of New France, Quebec, New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, and Upper Canada. Next slide. Uh, this part here, Christian, I'll be in a field. As you see in the illustration, you have the slaves working in the cotton fields. Next slide. Still dealing with the field, we had to, they forced us in slavery to work the sugarcane fields, the cotton fields, tobacco fields. Next slide. Verse 17 again. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Meaning your businesses. Next slide. Verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Next slide. Verse 19. Verse 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Meaning, cursed shall you be when you're born. You, be, you were born not knowing who you are, and when you die, you would die not knowing who you are. That's a curse. When you go to many of the other colleges, many of the students know their history, their origin. It's only black colleges where there's always confusion. You'll get, sometimes we'd hand up paper and ask them to write down their racial origin, and you get a, at least 25 different answers. It's total confusion. Uh, some people get to the point when they fill out job applications uh, where it says white, Asian, non-black, black, and the other races would proudly mark their um, status or their origin, their racial origin. And black people, the only ones that go, well, I'll put, um, you refuse to do it. We don't want to sign what race we are, feeling it may hinder us from employment. Next slide. Verse 20. Verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed. Meaning destroyed as a people, God. And until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doing. Notice, Moses is getting on the Israelites for the wickedness of our doings. He says he's, he's warning us if we break God's laws, these are the things that will happen to you. When we came out of Egypt, the Israelites were a mighty race. It tells you that the nations paid King David and King Solomon tribute. That's how mighty we were. After that, however, we went and broke God's laws. Next slide, please. So now remember, this Bible was written over 3,000 years ago. This part that we're reading, let me say it like that. What Moses wrote here is written over 3,000 years ago. Next slide. Uh, let me get to verse, now this is uh, dealing with curse shall not be in a city. Uh, this Tulsa, Oklahoma, bottom left, Black Wall Street. Many of you have read about it, correct? You've read about it? Many times uh, Caucasians will say to you, 
Why don't you get your own, do your own thing? Why don't you go get into your own city? They don't mean that. The evidence that they don't mean that was Tulsa, where our ancestors said, okay, we will do our own. We did it, we were very successful. They dropped dynamite from planes and killed many, many, many of us. Many articles on it, they haven't done a movie on it yet, I'm waiting for that. Uh, so that's when, when they get on you and say, why don't you do your own thing, become an entrepreneur, um, separate from whites, they don't mean that because we are the workforce in America. Without us working for them, <laughs> the economy would go very, very bad. Next slide. Okay, verse 21, please. Verse 21, the Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee until he hath consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. So now pestilence, many of you read about the, um, what happened during uh, Plymouth Rock when Britain came over and they gave the Native American Indians blankets with smallpox. They did the same thing in Mexico and they inflicted an input disease on them and that's how they helped overthrow them. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide. Okay, verse 23, let's read that. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. So now, if you all know about a little bit about slavery, the slaves had brass bells over their head, the runaway slaves, brass bells, and iron shackles on their ankles. All right, next slide, please. Next slide, there's some key points I want. Give me the, uh, Verse 25, the Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemy. Remember that word, enemies there, remember that word, go ahead. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shalt be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. You see that part where it says, we shall flee seven ways and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth, next slide. Here's an example of fleeing seven ways and being removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. This is the transatlantic slave trade, okay? If you notice, they got some of us from Senegal, Sierra, Sierra Leone, the west coast of Africa, including the Congo, Angola, South Africa as well, and they brought us over to Buenos Aires, El Salvador, Central America, North America, now this is a very limited map. We have other maps where it shows they took us to East India, they took us to Iran, they took us to Iraq. They separated us all over the globe to make sure we would never unite as a race again. Watch this, next slide. Okay, here, this is from the sub-Sahara slave trade, which was just before the transatlantic slave trade where the Islamic Arabs uh, enslaved us. They made a pact with Europe, uh, as well as certain African nations, certain of them, okay? And they, it was, uh, they helped bring us into slavery. Next slide, please. Next slide. I wanna get to some key points. Next slide, give me verse 32. Yeah, right here, let's start at verse 32, go ahead. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. This is amazing because many times they say the Bible's for everybody. Everybody on the earth did not go into slavery. That's a misconception. Mis everybody did not go into slavery. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto, notice two words there, another people. That means another race of people. That's what it means, another people. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. If you ever watched the movie uh, Roots, Mandingo, Drums, even 12 Years a Slave, um, even Birth of a Nation, they show you examples of when our children were taken from us, we did not have the power to get them back. That's what it means. That bottom part, and there shall be no might in thine hand, we would have no economic might or military might to unite our race again. That's what the prophecy is. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, six. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So when we were brought over here, we were serving other gods. Gods that don't look like us, Caucasian gods, even made of wood and stone. We got the white image of Jesus, Mary, St. Peter, St. Paul, so forth and so on. 
as well as Allah, the uh, Kaf in the Kaaba stone. Next slide, please. Okay, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. That's very, that's a very good precept. Many people don't know what that means, though. I'm going to show an example in the Bible of what it means. Give me Daniel 1 verse 6. I'm going to show you what it means. Daniel 1 verse 6. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm going to show you what they did to us in slavery to explain a proverb and a byword. Daniel chapter 1 verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. So they changed the names of the slaves. That's what happened. So now, the young lady here said that she was Ethiopian and Nigeria. The word Ethiopia, you know the origin of that word. It's a Greek word. It means faces burnt. It's Greek. Greek or has nothing to do with us at all. It has a meaning to us that fits us, but the word itself has nothing to do with us, as well as the word Nigeria. Go to the next slide, watch this. Next slide. Okay, here's some proverbs. When the slaves came over, they changed our identities. They called some of us African Americans. The term West Indian, do any of you know what that word means? West Indian. The word Indian, you know what it means? Yeah, because they believed that they were once Indian, but it was in the West. You know what the word Indian means? Uh, no. Okay, it comes from the Latin word indio, which means servant slave. So when you say West Indian, you're saying Western slave. But you have many people cheer, I'm West Indian. <laughs> you don't know what you're saying. Okay, then you have Puerto Rican. That's another common what they uh, did to the slaves there in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, which means port of riches. Puerto Ricans are some of the poorest people today. Don't feel offended if you're Puerto Rican in here. But uh, that's why many people come to the Americas. Cuban, Mexican, Dominican, which means Sunday, Colombian, Brazilian. These are all the names that the Caucasians put on their slaves. Then they gave us their last names. What's your last name? Okay, what's yours? Stephen. Stephen, what's yours? Okay, these are all names of the slave masters who owned you. And many black people, we have what's family reunions. You heard of that? A family reunion. Oh, I'm from the Miller family. And do you know what they did to the slaves? So if you were a runaway, how would they know you belong to the Miller or Stevenson or whatever? They branded the name of your owner in your back. He belongs to the Millers. She belongs to the Stevensons. So the name of your slave owner was branded in your back. That's what they did here in America, Britain, the Caribbean, so forth and so on. So if you notice, all these proverbs and byways. So Moses is initially saying, your identities would change in slavery. Your names would be changed. So let's look at it so far. Your sons and daughters would be given to another people, and their names would be changed. Watch this. Let's get some more. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. I just want to get to some key points that I know they're going to be familiar with. OK, verse 41. Read verse 41, please. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So Moses says your sons and daughters will go into captivity. You won't have a time to enjoy them. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. And shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, till thou be destroyed. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Meaning the curses of this Bible would be upon you for a sign. What does a sign do? A sign identifies what way to go, who you are, for example. Here's two signs at the bottom of this uh, slideshow here. Next exit, God's way. So you know if you want to go God's way, you would bear that way. This sign over here says, no exit, my way. That's, you know, they teach black people to be individuals, not solidarity. They teach us to be individuals here. So we go, I'm going to do my own thing. Then we end up in jail, prison, so forth and so on. So now, a sign identifies a direction, a place of being. So the signs in the Bible is A, so far, your sons and daughters will be given to another people. 
You would become proverbs and byways, meaning your identities would be changed. Those two major signs. I just want the major ones. Show me the next sign. Read verse 48. This is verse 40 is what I want you to see. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. What's that word? Enemies, mm. which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Very important, that verse. Look at verse 40. I want you to read it for yourself. You can see it real good. So, let's go to a slide to show you some illustrations of what that verse is saying. Next slide. This is serving your enemy for hunger, okay? Your food, okay? Your EBT. Next slide. This is what it means serving your enemy for thirst, meaning the waters that you drink, you have to go to your enemies. Next slide. This is what it means when it says you're going to serve your enemies for naked, nakedness, meaning the clothings that we all wear, we don't make it, we don't get the textiles from ourselves, we get it from other nations. Next slide. And in want of all things, meaning anything you want, God says you have to get it from your enemy. That includes medication, that includes money to buy a home, okay? It includes education, how to read, how to write. You have to get it from the man who conquered you. Next slide. Read that bottom part again. And he? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. This really solidifies who the Israelites are. Yokes of iron upon the necks of the slaves. This did not happen to all races on the earth. We have to stop at the thought that everybody was a slave. We hear it in some colleges. Uh, hello, is this a college? Nobody knows that this happened to us? This didn't happen to the Chinese, it did not happen to the Greeks, it did not happen to the Arabs. We have to stop and face reality. This is our history. Read it again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Y'all know what that word until he have destroyed thee means? You would have yokes of iron on your neck until he have destroyed you. Now you're not physically dead, I'm looking at you. So what does that mean? Right, you're destroyed here. That's why you never have unity amongst the black or Latino races. Never have unity. Never. You never see such a thing. It's, it's unheard of. This is why black families are dysfunctional. We are always baby mama drama all over the place. Baby daddy. Everything with us, there's no solidarity. Why? Because we've been destroyed as a people. How did they do that? Why did they take the yokes of iron off? This is what they did. I'm going to give you two brief examples. Well, Abe, I'll use Abraham Lincoln because of his emancipation. I'm just talking about in America. Well, Abe, if you take the yokes of iron off the slaves next, they might revolt. Well, maybe not because we divided them up into various nationalities. They won't unite. Some of them are African Americans. Some of them are Ethiopians. Some of them are Haitians. Some of them are West Indians. There's no unity there. Well, suppose there's a clever Negro amongst them and they realize that they're all one people. Mm, that won't happen. We'll do the next thing. Give them religion. Mm. Call us the Roman Catholic. Let that one over there be uh, Pentecostal. Let that one over there be Methodist. Let that one over there be uh, uh, Mormon. Divide them in religions, okay. Suppose that don't work, eh? Hmm. Politics. Ah. This one's Republican. That one's conservative. That one's liberal. That one is democratic. There's always divide and conquer. It keeps us separated. So I'm gonna read that part again. And he, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until, until, until. You would have yokes of iron on your neck until what? He have destroyed thee. We've been destroyed as a race. We have totally been destroyed. You know, we've read this Bible all our years, but never realized this was in there. We've been looking in libraries, trying to find our identity, and it's been right here in our hands all this time. Watch this. Next slide, please. Okay, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So I wonder who this is talking about. Who's, who's, what nations are as swift as the eagle? What nations have the symbol of the eagle as their symbol? You know? Oh, United States, very good. There were some other nations. You had Spain. You had Rome, you had Greece. Next slide. Here's some examples, okay? You even had Nazi Germany, okay? 
E pluribus unum, which is on your dollar bill, which means uh, out of many, one. Okay? Next slide. Verse 50, read verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Next slide. Next slide. It was making reference to 70 AD when Rome came against us. Next slide, please. Next slide. Mm, let's jump down to verse, give me verse 64, please. Wait, go back. I saw Zika. I want to talk about that briefly. Go back. Go back. Okay, read verse 61. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So, for breaking God's commandments, he's, the Lord told Moses to tell us, if you break my commandments, not only would your sons and daughters be taken from you, not only would they, their nationality be changed, not only would they have yokes of iron upon their neck, but I'm going to send disease upon them. Next slide. So now we got the Zika virus. Many of you heard of AIDS. It's not in the Bible, but it's, it's upon our people. Zika virus, patented 1947 by the Rockefeller Foundation. Okay, a lot of you may not have. You can Google it, look it up. These uh, patented diseases, for some reason, they aff afflict us. Remember when AIDS, what was the other, Ebola, Ebola. If y'all remember, you had certain white people catch Ebola, but there was a cure for them. Not for the black man, they said, oh, we ran out of the cure. And I'm like, hello, none of the so-called black leaders see this going on? Nobody sees this? Black man died of AIDS, I mean Ebola, white man cured of Ebola. So now you have Zika hitting Central America and now parts of Florida in Miami. Next slide, please. Plagues, diabetes, these are certain things, racial things that pretty much hit black people. Next one, please. Next slide. Next slide. All right. Verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. That's the transatlantic slave trade. That's the sub saharan slave trade. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. We never knew images of white people as our gods. That was never ever in history until we came on this side of America, where we serve, worship a white Jesus, Mary, Rosary beads, things of that nature. Next slide, please. Okay, these are the other gods that we serve. I want you to write the name of this book down. You see at the bottom left, it says the Borgias by Marion Johnson. You might have it in the school library, where she illustrates what happened during the Renaissance era and how Leonardo da Vinci was hired by the Catholic Church to paint Caesar Borgia as the Renaissance image of Jesus Christ. This was in the late 1400s. Okay, and she shows the illustrations. Next slide, please. This is his name. He was the model. He was the second son of Pope Alexander VI. He was the model Leonardo da Vinci used. I'll read it here. Caesar Borgia. He was the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI, Rodrigo Borgia, and his long-term mistress, Venosa de Catani. He is the model for the white image of Jesus Christ, replacing the true image of Jesus and creating lasting confusion to our people. Because in the Bible, Jesus Christ, we'll read it in a few minutes, is described as a black man having woolly hair. That's what the Bible describes him as. And the churches have been taught, don't read that to the slaves. Why? Because they might uprise, so don't read that. And this is what you'll find out in the movie, Birth of a Nation also. I keep plugging that movie, you need to give me some money. <laughs> give me the next slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, very important verse, verse 68, okay? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt means bondage. I'm going to show you that in a few minutes, but read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Bring you into bondage. Again, with ships. With what? With ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there, once you got off the ships, you shall be sold unto your enemies. So the ships we got off and were sold, these are talking about slave ships. It's not a yacht, it's not a cruise liner, it's a slave ship. You get off a slave ship and are sold. Read that verse again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. 
And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. So now let's see some illustrations. Next slide. Okay, here's an example of a slave ship, okay, during the 1600s. Next one. This is an example of the slave ships. Okay, the top right, we got off the slave ships, we were sold to our enemies. Next slide. Okay, Exodus 20 and 2 explains what the word Egypt means. In case you were wondering, why did I say that Egypt means bondage or house of bondage? Read that for us. Exodus 20 and 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So Egypt makes reference to the house of bondage. Here in the Washington Monument, you have the obelisk, which is a real obelisk from ancient Egypt. On your dollar bill, you have the all-seeing eye of Ra, with the uh, on top of a pyramid where it says Novus Ordo Seclorum at the bottom, which means New World Order. New Order World, exactly. New Order World, which is New World Order. Next slide. Okay, back to the ship. Read the verse again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So what we're showing you right here is an example of ships. Next slide, please. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, Thou shalt see it no more again. Uh -huh. And there, once you got off the ships, ye shall be sold unto your enemies. The Bible says once you got off the ships, you would be sold to your enemies. Did this happen to us? These are all ancient relics. Ancient. You have the auction slave block there. You have the, uh, il the uh, uh, literature. Okay, the posters. Valuable gang of young Negroes on Wednesday, the 25th. Uh, 250 Negroes arrived in the ship. Mm -hmm. Go around there. Hold on. Notice this, in case you're not reading along with me, to be sold on Wednesday. I uh, can't see the date. It says uh, 250 Negroes arrived in the ship. Uh, the Countess of, what is that word? S-Y-S-S-E-S, I can't pronounce it. Uh, you have the auction slave block here. Here's another selling, Tuesday, August 14th, and Thursday, August 16th. Uh, they checked your teeth. They checked all your physical characteristics, all your strength. Give me the next slide, please. Read that verse again. Hold on. Let me come to you. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies. Notice the Bible keeps using that word, enemies. I know a lot of you might not like that word, but it's in the Bible. So we didn't write this. People go, oh, you guys are racist. No, we're just reading what's been written 3,000 years ago, prophecy. We're not, we can't change it, it's there. You could go to any church, it's gonna say the same word. Read again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there he shall be sold unto your enemies, for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. When it says no man shall buy you, it means no man shall save you, redeem you. You had great black leaders like Martin Luther King who tried to buy us, meaning redeem us from our condition. He was assassinated. Malcolm X, another great black leader, he tried to redeem us from our captivity, assassinated. Medda Evans, assassinated. Marcus Garvey, poisoned and died. Stokey Carmichael, forced to into exile. So all of our leaders have failed. There's only one savior. One savior, watch this, give me Luke 1. Luke chapter 1, I'm gonna show you something. Many people say, oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Y'all don't really understand the purpose of Jesus Christ. Now we're gonna read it from the Bible. But I know the scripture y'all all know. For God so loved the world. You know that one, right? Everybody know that. My mama know that one. My grandma know that. But they lack the understanding. That's another scripture the slave master used to keep us under subjection. Watch verse 71. Luke 1, 70 and 71. Luke chapter 1, verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Saved from who? Our enemies. Oh, so this is a continuation from what Moses was talking about. Because when you read Luke, who was dominating the Israelites? Rome. Rome. Rome was dominating the Israelites. Read again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. I know we think everyone loves us. I have news for you. Everyone does not love you. Some of us don't love ourselves. 
This is why we change our hair, we change our complexions, we change our eyes. We don't love ourselves. We didn't hear? That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Where is he reading from? Luke chapter 1, the New Testament. Because some people in church, uh, my elder previous to me, he went to theology school and he told me that in theology school, they teach you that the Old Testament, don't read it, don't get into it too much, just stick with the New Testament. But even in reading the New Testament, when you read about enemies, like we've been on the street teaching, we'll ask certain brothers and sisters, who's the enemies that the Lord's gonna save us from? They go, uh, Satan, the spiritual demon, Satan. Really? Is there an S there, read that again? That we should be saved from our enemies, plural, enemies. Not one spiritual demon called Satan, enemies. And from the hand of all, that hate us. And from the hand of all that hate you. That's what salvation is. That's what Christ is coming to save us from. So, our great, you had great female leaders like Sojourner Truth, Harry Tubman, could not save us. Give me the next slide. I want to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Next slide. This is about the Dark Ages. Okay, watch this. This is a church, y'all could probably Google it, called the Varna. It was established in the year 1488. Uh, the Renaissance was about to er begin to go underway around the early 1400s, around 1453 approximately. But there were places that I'm going to show you, like this church here, the Varna. If you can look closely, there's paintings on it. This is in Romania. Next slide. On the outside of the church, they have images of black angels and a resurrection of the dead. Black people rising from the dead. Hmm, why would this be in Romania? Huh. Go ahead, next slide. You gotta refresh that? Okay, give me uh, Miriam, Numbers chapter 12. I'm gonna show y'all what happened. How does the Bible describe the children of Israel going into slavery on ships? Their sons and daughters being taken from them, given to another people. That identifies us. It did not happen to the Chinese, Japanese, East Indians, or Arabs, so forth and so on. How is it that the Bible is describing our condition, our situation? I thought the Bible was a white man's book. I thought the people of the Bible were white people. Until I read the curses, I said, well, that fits us, so now I'm confused. I'm like, I don't understand, I don't understand. The prophet Moses, he had his older sister named Mary. I'm just gonna read what happened to her when she got in an argument with Moses. I wanna get to the point where the angel, where the Lord went from off the temple. Yes, sir. The tabernacle. Yes, sir. Numbers chapter 12 and verse nine. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. Miriam became leprous when God got angry at her, white as snow. So wait a minute, I thought they were already white people. What would be the power of God if she was white turned into, no, it doesn't make sense. Showing you Miriam, her family, the Israelites were not white people at all. They look like you, they look like me. Now watch, let's get some more Moses, Exodus, I believe it's chapter 4. It might be chapter 2. I'm shooting from the hip. About his hand. I got it. You got it? Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. So, one of the first miracles God proved himself to Moses, he said, put your hand into your bosom, meaning in your garment. Now take it out. And it said his hand was leprous, white as snow. Go ahead. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Turned again as his other flesh. That's flesh like yours, flesh like mine. So remember, remember they, Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians are the, what you call today the Watusis. Moses was raised in that house. I know some of you might think the Arabs over there now are the Egyptians, that was not, that, that came during the Crusades. 
when they took over the land of Egypt over there. Watch this. Let's get some more. Give me the book of Job. Y'all heard of the prophet Job? The prophet Job? You ever heard of Job? The afflictions of Job. J-O-B. Anybody heard of Job? Only one brother. You heard of him? Let's see what he looked like in the Bible. Job 30, verse 30. My skin is black upon me. So the prophet Job said, my skin is black upon me. You know in theology school, you know what they teach you? That don't mean that. It does not mean that. So wait a minute. The children of Israel went into slavery on ships. They had yokes of iron on their neck. Their sons and daughters were given to another race of people. Hmm. Now I'm reading black. So all the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall in place. Let's get some more. Let's see what King Solomon of the tribe of Judah. Are we back? Okay. We're back. On the Varane, look it up, 1488, Romania. These are paintings of the apostles and prophets. If you can look, you see what color they are. They will never teach you this in school or church. All our learning institutions in America, Britain, the Caribbean, none of them teach us who we really are. Next slide, please. This is a painting on the same church. That's King David on the left, and these are the prophets on the right. You could probably order the book on Amazon. It might be about $500 or so. Next slide, please. Here's the final judgment. Look at the hand of God uh, on the light-skinned guy. Judgment. You got the black angel over there. You got people in chains, light skin, real right, light complexion. <laughs> Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. Abraham on the left, Isaac in the middle, Jacob there, holding the 12 sons. Notice they're all black. This is such an amazing thing because, number one, I thought we were only from Africa. Number two, why is this in Romania? There's such a thing called the Dark Ages. Many times in school, they teach us, they called it the Dark Ages because the people were barbaric and stupid. That's what they taught me. But upon a great search, it's like the people were not barbaric and stupid at all. If y'all get a chance, there's a movie called Othello, starring Lawrence Fishburne. Watch it. It's Othello's reign during the time of the Moors. Y'all heard of the Moors? The Moors, M-O-O-R-S, the Moors. Only you, y'all never heard of it. Okay, those are blacks that conquered and ruled Spain. The Moors, the word Moor is Latin, it just means blacks. Historically, they always give us generic terms to identify. It's like Ethiopia, the sisters say Ethiopia. It's a generic term that could fit any black skin deep person, anybody. Ethiopia, it means faces burnt, that's all it means. Moor, it just means black. Negro, it just means black. These are Latin words, okay? Oh, let me show you that. Give me Acts 13 and 1. Watch this. I'm going to show you more black in the Bible. Acts 13 and 1. Oh, I asked for Song of Solomon too, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Give me that one. Song of Solomon. That one first? Yeah, Song of Solomon first. So what I'm showing you are great secrets that have been in the Bible that all your great pastors have read. They've been paid not to teach it. Song of Solomon 1, verse 1. Song of Solomon 1, verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. The reason I wanted that first, because in theology school, they teach the minister to say, a black woman wrote this. But a black woman did not write this. It says the song, read it again. The song of songs, which is Solomon's. Which is Solomon's. Verse five. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Solomon says he's black. So wait a minute. King Solomon, king of Judah, king of the 12 tribes of Israel says he's black. And we are running around with Caucasian images of the Israelites. We look at movies, Christ came from the lineage of David and Solomon. And we look at a white Jesus, oh Jesus. And the Bible is saying black. You read the word black, 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 black all through the Bible. But we, the minister has been taught not to teach the children of the slave. Don't teach them that. There might be an uprising. They might stand on their feet and unify. Can't have that. Let them be Catholic, Roman Catholic, Republican, Democratic, liberal, conservative. Let them be all those things. But don't come back to this book. Now give me Acts 13, 1, please. Acts 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called nigger. A 
and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manian, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. So did you hear the word nigger? N-I-G-E-R. Oh, Niger. That's pronounced Niger. That's the new pronunciation. That's the new pronunciation. When during the time of Jesse Jackson, a lot of people got angry with that word. They said we got to change the pronunciation of that word. Let's make it Niger. So you say Niger, like the Niger River. It's a black river. So it makes reference to black. Let's see the next slide, please. Okay, here's a slide of Adam and Eve at the bottom left. I don't know if y'all can see it too clear. Give me Genesis 2 and 7 about Adam. Uh, the Discovery Channel did a story of Adam and Eve and said Adam was white. So I said, really? What does the Bible say? Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. I don't know about y'all. I've seen, you go outside this the ground, look at the ground, what color is the ground? Like the soil. Right, black. It goes from a dark soil to a very light soil. There's no Caucasian or red soil. Okay, when you see in the soft wood red clay, it's brown mixed with a little tinge of red. But nothing looks like the so-called white man, proving Adam and Eve could not have been Caucasian at all. They were black. Next slide, please. Okay, here's another book. Write this book down. It's called The Icons, I-C-O-N-S, which means the destruction or whitewashing of religious art. The religious art that was whitewashed was your art during the middle, I mean, during the dark ages, also called the middle ages. On the left, you have the prophet David, King David on the left, and on the right, you have Moses with the burning bush in his hand. This is all during the Middle Ages. I'm like, so wait a minute, if the people ruling were white, why are they painting black people? It doesn't make sense. Next slide, please. Here are two archangels in the same book, Michael and Gabriel, so black you can hardly distinguish their face. Next slide, please. Uh, this is the resurrection of Christ and his disciples. On the right, you also have Michael the archangel. Next slide. Okay, then on the left, this is Samson. It's from a book called The Catacombs of Rome. Write that down. Catacombs of Rome. That book is about 80 bucks. 80 bucks is still available. Samson portrayed as black slaying the lion. Wait, so the art is there in conjunction with what the Bible is saying? We've really been deceived as a people. You might ask yourself, why is that so important? The truth is important. Young black boys, for example, are raised and taught that all that is holy, righteous, and good is what color? White. So when, and we never fit in history. So you know what, when we grow up, when I see you or you, I will disrespect you. I'll do rap songs and call you names. You're nothing to me. But when I see the others, the ones that enslaved me, I see Jesus. And I love them. I'll show them respect and say, yes, sir. No, ma'am. But when I see you, ha! You ain't nobody. That's why it matters. Image matters. Image is everything. Okay, next slide, please. This is Mary, uh, Martha. Next slide, medieval. Okay, good. This one here, uh, let me see if there's a date there. This was Peter on the left, Paul on the right. Uh, you have the prophet Daniel here on my right side here. Next slide. Okay, this is the death and resurrection. This is the death of Mary on the right. This is the destruction on the left. Next slide, please. The Catalan Atlas of 1375. They show the black leaders of Israel who are in Africa. Okay, next slide, please. These are some, this is St. Maurice. Y'all can look him up. Um, you ever heard of, what's the black uh, historian uh, who got arrested? Henry Louis Gates. Here's a book called, what's the name of the book? Dang, Henry Louis Gates, I have it at home. But anyway, in the book, he has these pictures of St. Maurice is black, and in the book, uh, I believe it's the image of the black and western art, that's it. He says, I don't know why they have the saints painted black. He could not explain it. Him, as a great historian, came to a crossroads where he could not explain why the leaders of the dark ages were painted black. The word knights of the round table, knights. I know you got the K there, K-N-I-G-H-T. They call them the knights because they were black men. Oh, I know that's shocking to you. You've been living all your life that we're nothing. We just walk around with our pants down. We're more than that. We're more than we've become. Next slide, please. 
Okay, here's some more. Portrait of Unknown. Uh, this was in Prague in Czech Republic. Black men in Republic. Okay, Czechoslovakia. Next slide, please. Uh, this also uh, was 1528 to 1588. More black people in Eastern Europe. Next slide. That was Italy, by the way. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. Uh, here on the right, there's a Moorish king. They never tell you who the Moorish king is. Get this book entitled, uh, the one J.A. Rogers. What's the name of that book? History. Nature, Nature, Nature Knows No Color Line by J.A. Rogers. He went throughout Europe. He married a white woman at the end of his days. He married a white woman because he could not get into certain places without her help. She had to take him to these places and he found many black kings who ruled Italy, France, Germany, Czechoslovakia, Russia, and he put them in a book. They wouldn't let him take, he didn't have a camera, he sketched them in a book. So many people started to say that J.E. Rogers made that up. But then later on, people started to use photographs and take pictures of the leaders of Europe as black men. Hmm. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, here's another one. This is uh, great deuses with prophets. Russian art icons and decorative art from the origin of the 20th century. If you notice Christ is in the center, you have all the apostles as black. You have some of the prophets as black. They're all black. The angels black during the Middle Ages, medieval days, 1959. This was uh, put together, the Walters Art Gallery, to get to. So you ask yourself, what happened? How come every painting I see in school and around are white people? What happened? If the Bible says black, 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 where is these white images coming from? This is a book, you can get this book, it's entitled Russian Icons. The author is, write this down, Father Vladimir, V-L-A-D-M-I-R, Ovenoff, O-V-A-N-O-F-F. -F. That book's about $200. He shows you paintings of the Orthodox Church used to paint all the black images Caucasian. That's their job throughout Europe. Look in the back, you see Jesus as a black man in the back. Look in the further back, black, black. But look in the forefront. Look in the forefront. What is he doing? He's painting those same black images white. This is where your church is coming. This is where your school systems come in. To push, not the images in the back as black, but the ones in the front as Caucasians. This is what has happened to us. Remember we discussed about divide and conquer because there might be some of you clever enough to figure this out. Oh, we got to fix that. Change the artwork. Don't let them ever question what we're teaching you. Was that it on the slides? Okay. All right, now. The Renaissance, end of the Dark Ages. I want to read 1st Maccabees. You get a chance, there's a book called The Apocrypha. You can purchase it on Amazon.com. It was originally in all the Bibles. It was in the Septuagint and the Vulgate. It was removed in the late 1700s. This is when the blacks, the children of Israel, fought against the Greeks, white men. Now look, let's read verse 48. That's what we have up on the screen. Watch this. 1st Maccabees, chapter 3, verse 48 and laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So during the time of the Greeks, the year 166 uh, BC, the Greeks took our records and started to paint the likeness of their images in the Bibles. That's what they started to do. When you read this history, the Judas Maccabees and his family temporarily overcame the Greeks. Temporarily, I use that word operatively, temporarily. Now give me the book of Job, chapter nine, verse 24. This is the bottom precept we have here. So the question is, how did the Israelites go from black to white? Where did this change come in? Who did it? What happened? There's so much history that have been kept secret from us. Job, chapter nine, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. If I asked you what? Nation is dominant in the earth. What nation is the dominant power in the earth? What would you say? The United States. What would you say? United States. What would you say? Very good. Now let's see what the Bible says. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Oh, that might offend some of you. The Bible says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. 
He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Wait a minute. It said he covers the faces of the judges. Go back to the first slide, the one. Go back. This is how they did this. They made a league with all the nations are in cahoots to perpetrate this. He covereth the faces. We are the judges of the earth. Our images have been covered. Okay. Next slide. No, 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 no. Go back, go back. I want that verse 24 again. Read that. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So the judges are God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the angels, and the children of Israel are the judges. All their images have been covered up as Caucasian. Go ahead. If not. If the wicked didn't do that. Where? And who is he? And who did it? Because a lot of people like to question. We like to go against God. Ah, that's not true. So God asks you a question. If the wicked didn't do it, then who did it? You tell us. Next slide, please. Oh, remember I told you about the book, The Bourgeois by Marion Johnson. This is from the book. These are the, the sketches that Leonardo did of Caesar Bourgeois, the Renaissance image of Jesus. Notice how it goes from, from, when you look from left to right, these are the sketches. This is the famous one that we have blown up there that some of you have in your churches. Some of your mothers have them on their walls. You see them on TV. They look for actors who can portray this character. Like um, Mel Gibson did the movie Passion of the Christ. Everybody cried. Black ministers paid thousands of dollars, book whole theaters to show Passion of the Christ and black women and black men cried in the theater about the love of Jesus. You've got to be kidding me. Is... And then when they come out the theater, they go, hey, minister, can you prove Jesus is white in the Bible? I, I'm mangling the hell out of my way. This is what they do. We ain't gonna talk to you. There's no proof that Jesus was ever a white man. Let's see what the Bible says. Give me Revelation chapter one. Does the Bible describe Christ? Wait a minute. Before you get this, this description, give me 1 Corinthians 15. Cause you know what some, some people do? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Some people do, they say, nobody's seen Jesus. Nobody knows what he looked like. So if nobody's seen him, Nobody synced them. How did they get them on a cross? How did this happen if nobody seen them? First Corinthians 15, it's around verse 8. I think I'm shooting from the hip, somewhere around here. And then what's seen? Mm -hmm. Come on. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 7. Verse 6. After that he was seen of Read above that. And that he was seen of Cephas. Read above that. Verse 4. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we're reading about Christ's resurrection. Go ahead. And that he was seen of Cephas. Cephas is the apostle Peter. Then of the twelve. Mm -hmm. After that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. So over 500 people saw Christ. So the thought that nobody seen Jesus is a lie perpetrated by ignorance and television. And fear. Brother, what do you mean fear? Fear. Because if you ever woke up that you are the greatest people on the planet and the greatest crime has been perpetrated against you, you might take a stand. Lord forbid that thing. No, we don't want that. Mm -mm. Now, if all these 500 people saw Christ at one time, let's see what he looked like. Revelation chapter 1, please. Verse 14 and 15. No, read verse 1 so we know what we're talking about. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Operative word you want, wool. Sister back there got woolly hair. Sister right there got woolly hair. You all got woolly hair, but some of you permeate. I see it. I see you. <laughs> Christ had white woolly hair. This is during his death and resurrection. He comes back, he visits John on the island of Patmos. John looks at him, he says he has white woolly hair. The hair on his head, hair on his face is white like wool. Operative word, wool. As white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So what does that mean, his eyes were as a flame of fire? You gotta go back to Moses, because Moses told you how his eyes will look. Genesis 49 verse 12. Watch this. Yo, the Bible's written like a puzzle. A lot of you don't know the keys to the Bible. It's written like a puzzle. But why, brother? Why it gotta be written like a puzzle? Because if it was made so clear, guess what your masters, your slave masters, would have done to this book? Burn it. But they kept it because it's very, you gotta read precept upon precept. Line here a little, there a little. Watch this. Genesis 49, verse 12. 
His eyes shall be red with wine. Moses prophesied about the coming Savior that comes from the tribe of Judah. His eyes would be red with wine. Go back now. Revelation 1, 14 again. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And his feet... I see the sister's feet right there. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine grass. Grass is brown. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a furnace. I mean, he was very dark. He wasn't light brown. He wasn't light skinned. Did. Oh, my high yellow brothers. He was dark skinned. Dark, dark, dark. So, <laughs> the Bible describes Christ. So when people say nobody's seen Jesus, that's a lie. Let's get some more. Daniel 10, 5 and 6. Was that, is there more slides to this, Obadiah? Yes, sir. Let me see the next slide. You got to keep up with me. Oh! The, uh, the Last Supper. I wish I had a... I'll use this. <laughs> Look at this. Y'all seen this picture before, right? The Last Supper. This is supposed to be... Uh, Leonardo da Vinci painted this. This is supposed to be Passover night with Christ and the Twelve Apostles. His apostles, the Twelve Apostles, were they men or women? Huh? Men. Very good. But if you notice in the painting, you got a woman right here out of the Twelve, woman there. And where's that other woman at? They're kind of ugly. That right there, one, two. Abby, Abby, oh, come on, bro. <laughs> you got two women in the picture out of the 12. So number one, they're not supposed to be Caucasian at all. Number two, at the Last Supper, there was no women amongst the apostles. But nobody ever questioned that. So wait a minute, so who is it? Who is Leonardo da Vinci painting? Let me go back to this thing again. Okay, Caesar Borgia is right here. The woman is his sister, Lucrezia. There's a movie on Showtime called The Borgias. You can rent it, look at it. They show you the entire Borgia family, and they show Pope Alexander, they got him a few times right there, two, and where else over here, three. One, two, three. That's the father, Rodrigo Borgia. The woman is his sister, Lucrezia Borgia. But nobody ever examines him. We just tend never to question Caucasian people. We never question them at all because their word is absolute. They'll just tell you, hey, he was light. And we go, yes, sir. We never question. Next slide, please. In chapel, where God created Adam. Give me that Genesis 2 and 7 one more again. One more again. For the new people, Adam, what did he look like? Is it described in the Bible? Yes, he is. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. The dust of the ground is brown, different shades of brown. Not Caucasian looking. Go ahead. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So we never question this either. We say we, we pay money to go to Italy. Go, oh, the Sistine Chapel, it's so beautiful. This is a lie. This is a lie. Now, you see, this is supposed to be God right here, right? This is supposed to be God. Let's see what the, does the Bible describe God the Father? Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel saw a vision of the Father sitting on a throne. Let's see what it says. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Meaning the kingdoms were destroyed. And the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is God Almighty having no end of days, no beginning of days. Older than days. Whose garment was white as snow. Wait a minute, he had a garment on. If you have a garment on in clothes, you have to have a what? A body. You know, people say God don't got no body. Where did they get that from? It's, remember, it said, let us make man in what? Our image. So who's running around with the constant lies? God don't have a body. More lies. Read that again. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. The hair on his head was the pure wool. Wool. Hair like you. Hair like you. Hair like our people. Pure. But, but we will never see an image of that. Why? Because the slaves might unite and come together. God forbid that. So give them this. Straight hair. Is straight hair found in the Bible? I'm going to show you. You ever hear the expression, blondes have more fun? You still see Mary J. Blige? Now I love Mary J. Blige. She blondes her hair. Oh, God. Give me Leviticus chapter 30. I'm going to show you blonde hair in the Bible. Blondie, black women walk blocks. I see, what's that football player, the blonde at the top of his head? Odell Beckham. Blondes have more fun. 
Leviticus 13.30, I think. I'm shooting from the hip. Just look at it. Leviticus 13, verse 30. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry skull, even a leprosy upon the head or beard. Yellow thin hair is leprosy. What you call yellow straight hair, blonde hair, the blonde is a French word that's yellow, means yellow. Blonde is a French word that means yellow. The Bible says yellow thin hair or yellow straight hair is leprosy of the hair. Why don't the churches teach this? Because you see many gospel systems, yellow hair. They want that look. They want that. Give me Proverbs 3.31. Why do our people idolize? Image is everything. I told you that image means everything. A lot of people was, um, going back to Nate Parker, a lot of people was upset because they put out uh, the rape situation with Nate Parker. You know, that's over 17 years ago, and he was acquitted. Nate, and then I, I looked at The Great Debaters with him and Denzel Washington, which came out like maybe five years ago. Y'all saw that movie, The Great Debaters? Nobody mentioned it. Nate Parker has been in many films. It has never been mentioned. So how come when he does Birth of a Nation is mentioned now? Birth of a Nation has symbol symbolic meaning behind it, that they don't want you to look at it. That's the type of movie that will unite our people and make us look at the Bible with new eyes. And go, let me read this book again. They said, no, put out the rape thing on them. And a lot of people, a lot of black women, ah, he's a rape, wait, stop, acquitted, hello, acquitted 17 years ago, no. White people are behind her. Listen, you shouldn't see that movie, it's terrible. Nobody sees the constant games they play on us in the media. Now what I got you holding? Proverbs 3.31. Proverbs? Right. Proverbs 3.31. Envy thou not the oppressor. Envy thou not the oppressor. And choose none of his ways. Mm. Let's read that again. Envy thou not the oppressor. You gotta examine ourselves. We as a people tend to envy our oppressor. We want to look like them. We want to dress like them. We want to talk like them, walk like them. We want to do everything like them. We, some of us get nose jobs. Y'all ever see how people in here? Thin our lips down. I saw a black woman flatten her butt. Our people's crazy. <laughs> Read that again. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. The Bible says choose none of his ways. How many of you celebrate Christmas? Everybody. Do you know that Christmas is mentioned in the Bible? Let's see under what context. Jeremiah 10. We've chosen the holidays of the oppressor. Watch what the Bible says about Christmas. Hear, J Jeremiah 10 verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the ways of the heathen. Remember we just read, it said, envy thou not the oppressor and choose not of his ways. In Jeremiah he's saying, learn not the ways of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, mm -hmm. for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are lies. Watch this. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. One cuts a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. Then they decorate that tree with silver and gold. What holiday is this? God says, don't learn that. So have we been deceived as a people? Speak honest, have we been deceived? You could go to any church out there. They all celebrate Christmas. My mama church still celebrated to this day. And I showed the minister the scripture. He said, I ain't studying that. I don't care what that say. That's how the majority of your Christian leaders are. They're taught to disregard what this Bible says. Read it again. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So that tree don't fall, they would hammer it and fasten it with nails. They are upright as the palm tree. During the time of Jeremiah, they used a palm tree, but now they use an evergreen tree. But speak not, they must needs be born. Born means carried, they gotta be carried. Because they cannot go. They can't move. Next slide, please. Next slide. Okay, that's still going back to Adam and Eve. This is more false images, go ahead. Still same Sistine Chapel, next slide. 
Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Go back to the one, uh, the Greek Orthodox man painting. You know which one I'm talking about, right? He's painting the white image. Yeah, right there. You just passed it. Go back. Right there. Let's leave it right there for a moment. So, I want to give you some more color out of the Bible. Give me Jeremiah 14, verse 2. Jer Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. And the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. So Judah's black unto the ground. Some of you might think and say, that doesn't mean that. It means their condition. Hmm. Watch this. Give me Job 11, verse 6. Let me show you something about the Bible that you would not learn in your church in Job chapter 11 and verse 6. Watch this. Job 11, verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double. He would show you the secrets of wisdom, that they are double. So I'll give an example about black. They call us black people. As light as she is, she's called black. As dark as I am, I'm called black. But none of us are the color of my pant or your shirt or your shirt. Why do they call us black? Two reasons, our condition and our darkened complexion. So when you read black in the Bible, it's the same concept. Our darkened complexion and our condition, the same concept. So now, the sister mentioned Ethiopia and Nigeria. Let me show you something about that. Give me Zephaniah, it might be Zechariah, disease always mix me up. Chapter three, you know what I want? Yes, sir. Verse 10, listen good. Zephaniah chapter three and verse 10. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliance, suppliance, my suppliance, even the daughter of my dispersed. Even the daughter of my dispersed. Dispersed, how did they disperse us? In slavery. They dispersed the 12 tribes of Israel. Watch this. Shall bring mine offering. In that day shalt thou not be ashamed for all thy doings, wherein thou hast transgressed against me. For then I will take away out of the midst of thee them that rejoice in thy pride. And thou shalt no more be haughty because of my holy mountain. I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people, and they shall trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel. The remnant of Israel. That's what I want to get to. There's a remnant of Israel throughout the west coast of Africa, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Ghana, all along. They give me Isaiah 11, 11 to show you that. All the children of Israel are not just on this side of the world. Some of us remain behind. I'm going to show you that in the book of Luke 2. Luke 21. Remind me of that one. Yes, sir. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush. Cush is Ethiopia. And from Elam. And from Elam is East India. I was telling you they sent some slaves to East India. Uh, the name of the tribe is the, somebody asked, who remembers the name? The Cedis, Cedis, how do you pronounce it? Cedis. Those are the slaves they brought and served over there in the East India. Go ahead. And from Shinar. That's Iraq. And from Hamath. Mm -hmm. And from the islands of the sea. They sent us everywhere. So now, our mission is to gather the 12 tribes again, like it says in Matthew 24. Give me that. Watch this. So I know Christianity is really a staple in some of your brains. And you, what we're going over and showing you in the scriptures may be conflicting with what you've been learning. Matthew 24, verse 4. Matthew 15, verse 24. Matthew 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know what the word but means? Only. Only. It means only. But in Christianity, by the hand of your former slave master, they said, teach them it doesn't mean that. Jesus doesn't know what he's talking about. He came for everybody. Give me John 3, 16. I'm going to show you the trick. Hey, did I read the other scripture of color with y'all for Christ? I forgot, did I? Daniel, Daniel 10, 5, and 6. Real quick, real quick, I'm sorry. My mind just wandered. Daniel 10, 5, and 6. Then we're going to go back to John 3, 16. Daniel 10, and, five, and verse 5. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man 
clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like the burr. Barrel means green. He had a green garment in his vision. And his face as the appearance of lightning. He had a glow on his face. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Meaning he drunk wine. Remember we read it in Genesis 49. Come on. And his arms. He looked at Christ's arms. And his feet. And he looked down at his feet. Like in color. I thought they said color ain't in the Bible. Like in what? Like in color to polished brass. Burned brass. Burned brass. Huh, guess what? Even angels. Give me that Ezekiel 1. Don't let me forget John 3.16. Ezekiel 1. I think what I want. Verse about the likeness of the four beasts. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse, verse, 10. verse 10. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. These were four archangels. They four also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces and their wings were stretched upward. Two wings, everyone, were joined one to another and two covered their bodies. And they went everyone straight forward, whither the spirit was to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like the... As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. So these angels were like burning coals of fire. That's mean black, black, blackity black. <laughs> But they don't show that on TV. They show Caucasian angels, little Cupid angels with yellow hair. Jesus got yellow hair. In the Bible, the Bible says le yellow hair is what? Y'all remember? Leprosy. Some of y'all might have forgot. I want you sisters, don't be running out throwing no yellow stuff in your hair. Because you want to look cute. That don't look cute. And the only reason why people think it's cute because they've been brainwashed. When the truth of this Bible really cover the earth, our people are going to realize they've been totally deceived by this man, their oppressor. Now, John 3, 16. So, we read in Matthew 15, 24, where Christ said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Who knows why he called us lost? Why we call lost? Because we don't know who we are. Like today, we're not going around the room. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We're the lost sheep. So now, John 3, 16. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Can we start at verse 14, please? And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. So now, Christ is speaking. He references Moses in the wilderness. When Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, can we read that? I need to write it down, write it down. Numbers 21, I think it's verse 9. Let's see what Christ is talking about. I'm confused. He loves everybody. He loves the world. And the people spake. Tell them where you're at. Numbers 21, verse 5. And the people mm -hmm. Is that where I want to start? I think I want to start 9. I think. Okay. Verse 9. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. Jump up the verse right there, I that letter, number six. Number six. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. So the Israelites were dying in the wilderness by poisonous snakes. Now jump, jump right back down to verse 10. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. So now, that's the reference. Go back to John 3, 14 again. We got to read it, like the, another preacher said, in its proper context. Verse 14, John 3, 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Who did Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness to? Was it to all races? To who? The children of Israel. Go ahead. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, stop. What does even so mean? Even so, meaning the same way, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. To who? Lifted up means put on the cross so everybody can see. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness to the children of Israel. They got bit, he held it up, he said, look on this. And whichever Israelite got bit and looked on it, they got healed. Now Christ is using the same analogy. 
He says, even so, but in the same way must the Son of Man be lifted up. To who? The children of Israel. Now let's read on. Verse 15. That whosoever, that's where you get confused, believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's the confusion comes in with the word whosoever. Remember when the children of Israel got bit, it was the Israelites. Whosoever meant whosoever of who? The Israelites. Whosoever of you look, got healed. But you know what Christianity does? He was talking about the Chinese man was there, the East Indian man was there. There was no East Indians in the wilderness with us. There was no Chinese in the wilderness with us. It was the children of Israel. Watch this. Give me whosoever in Acts 2. Acts 2, 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. He's talking to the Israelites again about the whosoever. You whosoever of you Israelites, hear these words. Theology says, no, no. Use it for everybody. Black people don't like to look at words. You know what the proof is? The word world. Go back to John 3, 16 now. For God so loved the world. How many of you know what the word world means? It could mean planet, or it could mean a particular group of people having common interest in gold. Look at an example. There's such a thing as the Chinese world, such a thing as the sports world, such a thing as the music world. The word world is used in context of people having common goals and aims. A particular group of people. Now let's read it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So now love, it says for God so loved the world. So you might be kind of funny about, I'm not sure you got the right meaning brother about the word world because I don't look at words. Write it down, a particular group of people. In the Bible, God tells you who he loves. Give me Deuteronomy 7. You gotta ask yourself, who does God love? Give me that. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Right. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the... So he's talking about the children of Israel. He says he loves you. Give me Romans 9.13. For God so loved the world. Maybe God loves everybody. Romans 9.13. Romans 9, 13, as it is written, Jacob have I loved. That's, Jacob is the father of the Israelites. Read it again. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So God don't love everybody. He doesn't love everybody. So that means you've had the wrong understanding of John 3, 16 for centuries, since you came out of slavery. Because remember, you couldn't read, you couldn't write. So who taught you the Bible? Give me Isaiah 29, 30. Who taught you, if you couldn't read or write, who taught you when it says God so loved the world? That means all races. Who taught you that? Who taught you Christmas? Because it ain't in the Bible. God says don't celebrate it. So well, you, that's why Christ said you must be born again, meaning everything you think you know, you don't know. Read that for me. Isaiah 29, 13 said, For as much as this people, meaning the Israelites, this people, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me. Because you all say, I love Jesus, I love God, I love the Bible. Yeah, right. But have removed their heart far from me. You won't read it yourself, you won't do nothing the Bible says. This is what the complaint is. And their fear toward me. Your fear toward God, meaning everything you think you know about God, is taught by the precept of men. What men taught us this book? The white man taught us this book. This is why you got white images of Jesus. This is why you have low self-esteem. This is why you hate yourself. We're the only race that does music calling our women B-I-T-C. We're the only race that does that. Examine all races. I'm not just calling my woman that. We're the only race that does it. Why? Because we are lost. We're lost. Any questions? We're about to close out. Do we have any questions? Yes. So, who is next? 
What do you do? Ah! Oh, so what do we do next? That's a good one. Give me, give me uh, Zephaniah 2 1. What do we do next? Mm, I love that question. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay! Gather together, O nation not desired. This is what we must do. Gather together. Give me that first Kings 8. In order to gather together, because anytime black people get together for only a few few peas, I call them a few peas. Party. Anytime we want to party, we gather together. Anytime we want to, what's the other one? <coughs> Play. Like entertainment, sports, we come together. And there's always a shootout in them clubs, two standard them clubs. Give me that first Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Watch this. First Kings 8, 47. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Read verse 46, I'm sorry. Verse 46, if they sin against thee. We have sinned as a people. For there is no man that sinneth not. And thou be angry with them. God was angry with us. And deliver them to the enemy. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy far or near. Have we been carried away captive? So we're reading prophecy of what happened to us. Far or near because some of our people remain behind. And they suffer what's called colonialism. They didn't go on actual ships. They stayed behind and were colonized by the British, the Portuguese, the Dutch, the Germans. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Meaning remember who you are. Remember your ancestors, remember your identity, the Israelites. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captives, and repent. What we got to do? And repent. That means change your way of living, change your way of thinking. And make supplication unto thee. Pray to the Lord. In the land of them that carried them captive. In the land of them that carried us captive. Saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. What does sin mean? Sin. You Christian girls over here, what does sin mean? What does sin mean? Something that's not morally right. You mean like me digging in my ear? You might go, ugh. Is that what, me picking my nose? Is that what it's talking about? Give me 1 John 3, 4. I'm going to show you sin. 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin means you're breaking God's laws. So you've got to know. Remember when Moses came from the mountain, he gave us laws. He did not give us religion. He gave us laws. He didn't say Baptist, Pentecostal, Muslim. The enemy did that. Moses said these are the commandments. Keep these commandments and live. So when we go back to 1 Kings 8, 47 again. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whether they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, We have sinned, and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I, which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication. When you do all those things, repent, keep God's commandments, it said, and then? Then hear thou their prayer. Then God will hear your prayers. And their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. Meaning he will fight for you. This is what we want. We want to get to the point, because right now, we, I'm going to wrap it up quickly. We have no power to fight against the government institutions at all. We have to turn to the one true God. Okay? Uh, real quick, give me that in um, Luke um, 18, I think it is. Luke 18 or 13 about prayer. I'm going to make this quick. You have such a thing as Black Lives Matter. You heard of that? Black Lives Matter. You know who controls Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter. Anybody knows? George Soros, he's the one that gives money and tells them where to go, what to do, what to say. The whoever, what was that expression? Whoever plays the, whoever plays the music pays the pipe or something like that. So they're not doing what that little thing you see them doing, it's of no value. God's not in it. You cannot, you will never historically look at any revolution run by homosexuals and women. I'm gonna tell you straight, you might not want to hear it, but you will never see any true change illustrated or orchestrated led by homosexuals and women. Women can support, always you're there our uh, support system, but it's the man, Luke, 13, Luke 18, verse 1. 
Luke 18, verse 1. Here's a question. I got a question for you praying people in there. Is it good to pray that God destroy your enemies? Is that in the Bible? She says no. What do you say? You don't know? You're not sure. What do you say? He said definitely. What do you say, young lady? You don't know. Okay, that's fair. Luke 18. Luke 18, verse 1. Here's a parable Christ gave. Just listen to the parable. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. So the widow represents the children of Israel. The judge, the unjust judge that did not regard anybody, is the Father, God of heaven and earth. Watch this. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she worry me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect? which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Do you hear what he's saying? Shall he not avenge you that cry unto him day? We don't pray to the Lord to avenge us of our enemies. We say in our church, we have no enemies. As we get shot in the church in North Carolina, bam, 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 we have no enemies, we love everybody. We say we have nobody hates us, everyone loves us. So then Jesus don't know what he's talking about again. You've made the Bible of no effect again because of your brainwashing with white man religion. They took the boy up for a hamburger. Burger King. Christ said, hear what the unjust judge said. Can you read that part again? And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Y'all don't want no vengeance. You don't want God to avenge you. You like it being here. The Bible was all about Always about salvation, deliverance from America. What pre preacher is talking about leaving America? Nobody. Everybody want to stay here. So they've been taught lies. We have a country. The Bible says we have a homeland that we're going back to. That's more in learning as you learn this Bible. And the Bible tells you the children of Israel will dominate and rule the earth under Christ. But some of you don't want that. You want to be that assimilated slave with the yellow hair and the blue eyes. American dream. The American dream. Well, if you look at the news, they said Russia is preparing for World War III. America is also. The only ones who are clueless are black people. We're at home. Today's a perfect example. On the news, they're talking about destruction, or Russia's preparing for war. What is the black man doing? He's playing drums and dancing in the street. This is why Christ said this about black men. I don't want you black brothers to get upset, but this is what Christ said about you, about us. Luke 7, 31, please, quote, come on. I know it's time, we've got to wrap it up. Luke 7, 31, watch, watch what Jesus said about us. Luke 7, 31, and the Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation? And to what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. Do you hear what Christ said about the men of his generation? The men of his generation are the men of our generation today. Christ said they are like children playing in the market. Look, today's a perfect example. They have something to come to for extra credit for their school. No, I don't want that. They bought condoms, music, playing drums. We want to rock and roll. We want to get down out there. Homecoming. Homecoming. That's what our people want. Christ said they're like, big, they're like children, immature children. This is why we have a fat, well, the black woman has a problem with the black man. Immature. And they don't want to hear it. Black men don't want to hear it. So any other question before we close out? Do you have literature? Literature. You got a flyer? So, I hope y'all took notes. If you didn't, shame on you. You have flyers. Follow along. Go to our website. You can read along. Don't just take what we said for face value. I showed you the scriptures, maybe that's not good. Maybe you think we made that up. Get your Bibles and follow along, read it in the flyers that you have. See if what we're saying is true. Put us to the test. Children of Israel who were scattered from the Americas and colonized in Ethiopia, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, the Congo, South Africa. You'll find out during the um, 40s and 50s, we were the first animals in their zoos.
You can uh, Google that, um, human zoos. We were in the Bronx Zoo in New York City. We were in the zoos in Brussels, Belgium, Italy. We were behind those cages and they threw food at us. They didn't have lions and tigers in it, they had us. They have actual photographs. So that's what we're saying. What we're saying to you will lead to your salvation. All right, so with that, we're Israel United in Christ and we say shalom to you all. Call around, you see purple and gold, you see it. It's ass. Are they, where are the girls? The girls? They were just walked out. Well, some of the sisters just, where they at? They were sisters. Probably in the lobby. This is Fernando Clark. Fernando Clark. There were some sisters, they're in the hallway now. So if you want to talk to them and feel comfortable talking to them, we make you nervous. Hello. <laughs> yeah, so many brothers, oh, I'm nervous. But the message we have is for you, for all our people. So we will, it will behoove you to repent, change your life, stay in contact with us. All right? Um, three o'clock. Okay. Um, um, so you'll come to the school. Uh, we'll do um, simple military drills, and then the officers will have a class. And then the bishop's class. Okay. All right. Yeah. Did you learn something? Most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. And I'm, I'm very interested to continue to learn. All right. And what's I mean, the key thing that you learned? Key thing is that we got to come together. We got to unify. We got to repent. Okay. We got to change our ways so that we can be redeemed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most definitely. Yeah. What's your nationality now? I'm an Israelite. From what tribe? Tribe of Israel. No. Yeah, I turn the flyer oh, over. Oh, the tribe of Judah. Of Judah, right? The tribe of Judah. Most ah, definitely. so your dad's a so-called black man. Most definitely. All right, um, Jesus Christ, that came from your tribe. Um, so your blood is royalty. Yeah, that's what our people don't um, see in each other anymore, is that royalty. Um, um, so we got to separate ourselves and rise above all this out, all right? You have any questions right now? Man, so small, 3 o'clock. Yes, sir. Yes. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.